The movie begins with a panorama of a city at night. A helicopter flies over a city called Zone 414. We hear a message addressed to the city's residents, informing them that if there are any problems with the androids, they should immediately report them to the Vate Corporation. The story begins in a dingy, prison-like place. A man approaches the bars and dials a code to enter the prison cell. Inside the room, there is a girl, and the man prepares a gun with a silencer for execution. The girl, holding back tears, speaks to her executioner, saying that she can foresee the future and that all the people who help them will die. The man cold-bloodedly shoots her in the head and then uses a knife to remove her scalp. From the center of her skull, he extracts some kind of sensor with a flashing light. A voice from the speaker announces that the test is over and David Carmichael is free to go. The girl with the bloody skull is loaded onto a stretcher and taken away. On his way out of the cell, David meets Joseph Veet, who selects the candidates for a specific mission. During a conversation with him, he tries to get specific details about the psychology and motivation of the person he is trying to assassinate. Meanwhile, the interview is recorded on a surveillance camera. David is taken to the castle in a vintage car. He is met at the entrance by armed guards, and one of them takes him inside the building. The owner of a castle, coming down the stairs, welcomes the man into his empire. The owner invites David into a separate room with computers, where he informs him about his daughter, Melissa Veet, who disappeared three weeks ago. He claims to know exactly where she is, but he needs a delicate approach to find her. He, the creator of the androids, reveals that he is the founder of Zone 414. That's a city where androids and humans can interact freely. He believes he has created an antidote to loneliness in today's world, as he believes that close relationships are rare today. The owner tells David admiringly about the benefits of his innovation and the nuances of implementing it. He is certain that his daughter is somewhere out there and wants the agent to help him. The owner fears that the police may disturb the balance of the specific area during the search for his daughter. He raises the stakes for the assignment and gives David a pass to Zone 414. The man strongly recommends that he first contact the android Jane. The scene shifts to Area 414. Jane, a beautiful android girl with blue hair, descends into the underpass. We hear the voice of a maniacal man who is certainly curious about her. The girl cautiously looks around. We see an ad for androids with a picture of her behind. In a special room, a rich customer selects an android man for his personal use. They are identical to ordinary humans. The android girls are perfect, but he is not satisfied with their sincerity in declaring their love for him, so he eventually stops on a male android. In the meantime, David Carmichael arrives at Area 414. Jane has an encounter with a male client, and she comes into close contact with him, literally becoming, for a time, the girlfriend he lost. David Carmichael is in a yellow cab driving slowly through the narrow streets of the city. There are androids everywhere on the street, offering their services. The man walks up to a hotel room, where he is greeted by a robot voice offering favors of various kinds. Jane reports to the observer about her meeting with a client and seems to have warm feelings for him. Jane hears some voice messages in which a distorted male voice expresses a desire to kill her. The observer claims that no one in the zone is allowed to do that, but then she is informed about another encounter. Jane moves swiftly through the night city streets, looking around fearfully, she is at home, hastily undressing as she goes. The girl tries to end it all, she is in pain and feeling bitter, but she can't die because she is an android. Later, David Carmichael pays Jane a visit. The two talk about Melissa Veet. It turns out that Melissa Veet is pretending to be a robot, trying to escape her father's influence. The man asks Jane to take him to Royale, who controls the robots. The girl refuses to help him to avoid further problems. David Carmichael offers to help her with her issues in return. The girl plays a voice message where a man is threatening her. The stranger has been stalking her for three weeks. David Carmichael notices the figure of a man in the window. He orders the girl not to answer the door until she hears his voice. He sets off in pursuit of the spy. He fails to catch up with the stranger, but he finds a camera with a picture of Jane on the roof of the house. He assumes that the perpetrator will now change tactics because he has been detected. She realizes that she is being stalked and feels scared. Jane clearly has a lot more feelings and emotions than a normal robot. The next day, they go to meet Royale. The managers refuse to talk in front of Jane, and David Carmichael asks her to leave the room. Royale shares the man's misgivings about the robot and warns him of the danger. She thinks Jane should be reprogrammed since she cannot be turned off. Also, she started to ask a lot of questions. Still, they can't reprogram her, as the inventor, Joseph Veet, considers her a unique creation. Royale considers herself something of an elite, and she veiledly shares with David Carmichael the nuances of the specifics of working with the rich people who control androids. 
She claims she has no idea who is following Jane and suggests he not get involved. The one asks simply to do his job, find Melissa Veet, take the money, and leave the area. Royale writes down on paper the name of the place and the address of the next station where the man should go. As soon as David Carmichael leaves the room, she immediately makes a phone call to a man. The woman asks him to tell David where Melissa Veed is but not to mention her or she will kill him. The two arrive at the established place and are led to a room at the end of the building. In the gloomy room, a man named George sits, his face disfigured, he has an eyesore over one eye. He apologizes to the guests for the gloom in the room, explaining that his skin is too sensitive to daylight. He introduces his partners, Hamilton and Jaden. The girl looks a lot like the one the man shot at the movie's beginning. Her face is cut and bruised. She sits obediently on her knees at her master's feet. George relates that one day Melissa Veed appeared at his gate. After meeting her, the man thought she was a robot. He claimed she had only been with him for 24 hours. After making a deal with David Carmichael, he offers to provide the rest of the information about Melissa. The agreement calls for David to give him the robot for personal use for two hours. In his opinion, she is a magnificent specimen, but sex as such does not interest him. He is a lover of more subtle acts. His entire demeanor and appearance indicate that he is a sadist. Jane is horrified. She steps back and fumbles with her hands for the glass on the tray behind her. Grabbing the glass, she smashes it so that there are sharp edges and makes a sharp lunge toward George, putting the broken edges of the glass against his throat. She demands to be told the whole truth about Melissa Veet, or she will finish him off quickly. The man is frightened, trying to pretend that Melissa Veet has escaped, but Hamilton gives him away. The robot intensifies the onslaught. He has no choice but to report the girl's whereabouts. The couple quickly leaves the room. Jumping into a cab waiting for them at the entrance, they drive to the junkyard. They look for Melissa Veet among the piles of scrap metal and rusted appliances. David Carmichael enters one of the suspicious hangars, ordering the girl to wait for him outside. He uses a flashlight to search in the dark. The frame focuses on human feet some distance from the ground. Suddenly, Jane appears behind the man, the girl's eyes expressing horror. The focus moves a little higher to a body hanging in a noose. It is the body of Melissa Veet. She is hanging. Jane runs out of the hangar in terror. She runs down the road away. The action shifts to a room where, in the crosshairs of several video cameras, David Carmichael is asked if he has managed to track down Melissa Veet after all. We see the body of the dead Melissa Veet in the frame. The man is back in the castle. The conversation takes place in the room where the body of the murdered Melissa Veet lies on a special stand. He claims it was not a suicide because there was not even an object to stand on to do it at the scene. He says he has seen many crimes so he is sure he is right. For his part, Veet, who fancies himself the god of his particular empire, refuses to investigate there because it would shake his client's confidence in the safety of existing in that environment and contribute to the empire's destruction. He is convinced that David Carmichael is incapable of comprehending this philosophy. The man warns David Carmichael that if he tries to destroy his kingdom, he will destroy him. The detective reminds him of the payment for the search. The promised sum will be in his account by tomorrow morning. David leaves the castle, leaving the grieving father alone with his daughter's body. Jane asks Royale to spare her certain feelings. The woman offers her methodology to believe what she should believe and to stop thinking. Royale promises to help the girl if she listens to her. The girl breaks into David Carmichael's hotel room and tells him that she is the one who killed Melissa Veet, but she regrets it. David Carmichael believes that the girl killed the zone system, where people try to escape from themselves. He claims that Jane and her mistress are in no danger because their owner, Marlon Veet, is not interested in the investigation. He is willing to turn a blind eye to absolutely anything to not undermine his state's unshakable imaginary values. The conversation escalates to elevated tones. Defensively, Jane tries to penetrate David Carmichael's essence by touching the painful strings of his soul. First, she gives information from his file, to which David Carmichael responds that she is, like a robot, well-informed. But she has a bigger trump card, personal information about him and his wife, whose death he blames himself for. The girl goes further in her revelations about him. She wants to tell him his secret desires, his passions. David Carmichael throws her out of the room, but she continues. She offers to help him extinguish the flame of guilt he carries inside by becoming like his wife. For a split second, he is fascinated, trying to cope with himself and his feelings, but then he grabs Jane by the throat, pinning her against the wall. She asks if the man told Marlon Veit that she had attacked him. Finding out that he didn't tell her, she is amazed as to why he is protecting her. He replies that his main mission is protection. Jane reminds him that before he leaves the area, he promised to deal with the man who wants to kill her. David Carmichael suspects that the girl does want to die, so she doesn't feel like an eternal prisoner. 
His wife also wanted to die because she knew she was terminally ill and he bought her pills to get her to take her life. He claims to sense when people want to die. David Carmichael meets Joseph Veet in his office. He transferred $2 million for his work to the agent's account. As a private detective, David Carmichael does not relent in his arguments. In the conversation, the detective implicates Joseph in the girl's death, as it is the main lever to hurt his brother, who has the power to control everything. He suspects that Joseph Vade is in the absolute shadow of his brother, essentially representing himself. Now he intimidates poor Jane because the girl is his favorite. In this way, he tries to assert himself in some way. Joseph Vade is shocked to hear the truth. He dares to show David Carmichael something resembling an android, which is ugly and constructed from various living tissues and technical elements. It is an ugly sight, like a mannequin standing on a pedestal and even breathing, apparently in pain. Joseph Vate says that a girl once had the indiscretion of seeing this monster, and if she had told her father about this blasphemy against the unique android creatures, his brother would not have forgiven him. Now he relishes the thought that the scapegoat for the hanging girl's death will be Royale. David Carmichael says he belongs behind bars. The man is sure his brother won't let that happen since there is no evidence and the detective, in turn, will be left with no money. As for pursuing Jane, he will think about what to do with her. He sounds like a real maniac and after that, David Carmichael leaves the office. The man lies to the video camera, saying that Area 414 is safe. Jane returns home, where the maniac is already waiting for her. The girl grabs a knife, but he quickly immobilizes her by pressing a button on a special remote. Now she cannot move, but she can hear and feel him. The maniac spreads the surgical instruments on the table while the girl is immobilized. A tear flows from her eye. Sensing something is wrong, David Carmichael runs to Jane's aid. At this time, the maniac tastes the tear leaking from the girl's eye, noting that Marlon Vait has not missed even the smallest detail. Suddenly, she grabs him by the throat and throws him away, saying that she is alive, that she can love, and that she loved the hanged girl. She beats him as hard as she can. An armed agent bursts into the apartment. He calls for Jane but catches the girl standing over the bloodied maniac. She asks the detective to do what he has to do, put her out of her misery by killing her. He asks if this is what she wants. David Carmichael puts a gun in the girl's hands, pointing the weapon at the maniac. He informs her that this man killed Melissa Veet. If Jane can live with that, she can shoot him. For a second, the girl hesitates, then shoots the maniac right in the head several times. David Carmichael admits to Jane that he regrets buying those pills for his wife. She concludes that they will both be destroyed. In an interview for the record, David Carmichael reveals that he could not locate Melissa Veet. The girl was already with her father and uncle when he returned. The action shifts to the castle, where David reminds Marlon Veet of their arrangement. The man finishes creating a new android by putting a wig on him. It is his daughter, Melissa Veet. According to the contract between the agents, video tapped, all of David Carmichael's false testimony is irrefutable. At the end of the film, we understand the contract's price. Through the open gates of Area 414, Jane finally leaves her prison and David Carmichael meets her at the entrance.